This is a, a former Soviet country. The clock of history is uh, late for uh, 10, 20 years. The international image of a criminal city, because he had a lot of lovers, including the wife of the local governor. Привет and welcome to Odessa, Ukraine. I'm here with a very special guest. This is the first in a series entitled Life in Ukraine. We're going to be discussing uh, lifestyle here in Ukraine with expats. And I'm here with Ugo Poletti. You can tell from the name is, is Italian. Ciao um, tutti. <laughs> Ciao tutti. And uh, Ugo came here a few years ago and he's actually the founder of an English language online journal that deals with business and culture here in Odessa called the Odessa Journal, which of course I will link below so you can go and check that out uh, after the interview. So Ugo, benvenuto. Grazie. Uh, tell us a little bit how you ended up here in Odessa uh, because you're from Italy originally. Uh, four years ago, uh, a company from Milan, which is my city of origin, invested uh, in this city, there was a project, and they offered me to come here to take care of their business, uh, because among my languages there is also a base of Russian. Okay, so you actually spoke a little bit of Russian before you, you came to Odessa. How good was your Russian and do you have any advice for uh, an expat moving here in terms of the language barrier, because in general the level of English is not very high in Ukraine and uh, not, definitely not compared to Central Europe even, never mind Northern Europe, and uh, unless, you know, there's no Italian either for you. Any expat can come to this uh, without any worry, because uh, we have among our friends somebody that doesn't speak Russian at all, and they just leave us in some time in this city. Uh, of course, uh, I recommend to study the language the moment you want to uh, have acquaintances uh, outside the group of expats. You want to have some local friends. And um, my Russian was a um, decent one because I used to study it for several years. I was poor in practice, but I had uh, the opportunity to improve it here. Okay, so it is possible to overcome the language barrier and do basic things. But what do you think in the medium to long term, if uh, you don't learn Russian, what is your life going to be like here? Uh, you can have a fantastic life, but you are limited. So, uh, as you, but this is um, when you go to any country. If you want to st to feel like a citizen of the country, if you want to be have the opportunity to have a, a good relation with the local people, if you don't study local language, you will always be limited. So, it's yeah. not, it's unavoidable to study the, the language, which is a tough one but very interesting because it's full of culture and literature. Exactly, and actually some of those authors were born here, like Babel, for example. Exactly, Babel, and um, look, even the iconic uh, Russian uh, poet, who is Pushkin, used to spend uh, many months here, and he was very well inspired because he wrote some of his masterpieces in the city because he had a lot of lovers included the wife of the local governor, who was very jealous and started to say to the Tsar, please, please get rid of this young poet because he is having some uh, not very uh, pleasant uh, relation with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so even back in those days, uh, Dessa was causing many uh, romantic scandals. That's yes. funny. <laughs> Great. Um, <clears throat> so, Ugo, what would you say is your favorite thing about living in Ukraine and Odessa in particular? Uh, it's mostly a feeling, uh, a feeling of uh, a light life. It looks like uh, anytime you walk in the center city of Odessa, you will have some uh, interesting experiences. People are uh, very, very open here. Probably this is the most open and um, uh, most, uh, let's say, ironic uh, population uh, of Ukraine. Because they, like, because they have a sense of humor, which was very rare in Soviet Union, I must say. <laughs> so that's the famous Adyeski humor. Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a real one. As an Italian, I feel very comfortable with it. And um, you have the impression that in this city, in this country, also in Ukraine in general, you can, do, you can start up uh, your project, your business, uh, with some risks, of course. We, cannot, we have to mention it. 
but um, it, life is, uh, from some t certain point of view, easier. And here you are surrounded by beautiful architecture and uh, beauties in general. <laughs> of course, Odessa needs no introduction in terms of the female beauties that uh, uh, wander its streets on any uh, summer's day for sure. Um, they're the things that attract you about uh, Odessa and why, why you enjoy living here. What are the things you don't like so much about life in Ukraine, life in uh, Odessa? As an um, Italian coming from Milan, which was uh, in its history also an Austrian city, so we have tend to work uh, with the German style, or my say I mean, international style. Here, from a professional point of view, they tend not to plan. So the agendas have a time limit, one week or a few days. So uh, if you are used to make plans or so to fix uh, meetings in one or a few months, uh, forget it. You have to. Uh, to, to call some days before uh, to check. Also, uh, the, uh, from, uh, the public administration is a uh, very difficult experience here. Uh, better to have some friends that help you, some angels, because uh, you, it's a fight when you need some papers, uh, even to understand where is the office, because uh, you can be sent to three different offices uh, by the same uh, responsible uh, of the administration. So you, would you say that's a fair comparison with maybe the south of Italy? I mean, people are not so punctual or planning, they're more spontaneous, uh, public administration is not the best. Italy is a complicated country, uh, but there are some differences. Uh, if you work with an international approach, here you have to use a more Napolitan approach. Okay, so it's um, maybe Naples on the Black Sea, <laughs> to yeah, a certain extent. Yeah. Um, tell us maybe a little bit more about that, the uh, history with Naples in this city, Odessa. That's a nice segue yes, into it because yes. there's a big Neapolitan influence. Yes, uh, actually there is a very nice story that even Italians don't know. But this city was a sort of a Hong Kong on the Black Sea, but founded by Italians. Because the founder was actually a, a, a nobleman called José de Ribas. He was born in Naples from a Spanish father, and you will be happy for that, an uh, Irish mother. Mm -hmm. we, were here too. Uh, we were here too, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> but he uh, was born uh, in Naples, which was, which was a capital at the time of a kingdom. And um, due to this experience, when he came in Russia, and he uh, used to be an officer of St. Catherine, oh, not saint, she was not saint. <laughs> she was definitely not a saint. The Imperatrix <laughs> Catherine the Great. Uh, he, he had the idea to, to build up a port in this harbor because he understood immediately how strategic it was for the Russian Empire to have a port. And uh, when he founded it, he decided that he needed uh, citizens uh, with professional skills and invited from Italy uh, merchants, shop owners, uh, uh, ship owners. And uh, so the economic spine of the city initially in the city was uh, Italian. You, must ima you can imagine that also the streets of the city uh, for some decades were written in uh, Russian and Italian. Wow, this I didn't know. So there used to be street signs here in Italian. There is a, an anecdote which is one of my favorite, the famous uh, Italian song O Sole Mio, which uh -huh. probably is the most popular in the world. Everybody expects that it belongs to the Neapolitan repertoire, but in fact uh, the author uh, composed the, the song in Odessa. O Sole Mio. O Sole Mio. And, uh, and uh, of course the song is in Napolitan because the composer was Napolitan, but he was living here and uh, he was inspired by the Black Sea. If you read the text, there is no mention of Naples. Amazing. So actually, Italy's most famous song is, <laughs> is actually from Odessa, uh, written by a Napolitan who was hollering here. And that shows the huge Italian influence on the city. You had, of course, designers and architects like Boffo. Uh, what others do we see? Bernadazzi. These are all names of restaurants and bars in the center today. Fanconi. Um, and there were also some Brits uh, who were there. Yes. Upton was an engineer who uh, actually built the Potemkin Steps. So. To complete um, this, this little excursion about the history, this was the city of many nationalities because after the Italians, many Germans came 
Germans, which include German-speaking uh, um, nationalities, so also Austrian and Swiss, and uh, Polish, a lot of Greeks that uh, started to be the, the merchant uh, culture, uh, maritime culture, and uh, and a lot of Jewish. So this city was a, a pole of attraction for several nationalities because it was very open, uh, religious tolerant, e doing business was very easy. It was a port of Franco, so with total f fiscal exemption. So you get rich very quickly in the city if you had good brain and the will to work. It sounds like New York. It was, uh, we, okay, we can say that it was actually a New York on the Black Sea because it was a real, real melting pot. The majority of the city uh, had uh, uh, international regions, so it was a, a, cosmi a cosmopolitan uh, city. Very exciting to read this history. Exactly, I was really fascinated by not just the original designers who came from mainly Western Europe or Central Europe, but also just a number of nationalities that flocked to the city in the Russian Empire. You had Albanians, you had Bulgarians, you had Romanians, you had Jews, you had, um, I don't know, Ukrainians, Russians, Gagouz, um, who else are we going to, there were Germans, there were Greeks, there were Armenians, there were Azeris. It was, was really like, shall we say, uh, uh, a melting pot of Europe in that sense and you can see that in the the architecture obviously with its influence is the same architect for the opera house as that in Vienna so would you describe the city as a European city or a Russian city or a Ukrainian city a Soviet city? Uh, it's more or less what you can say from St. Petersburg because uh, uh, some Russians say St. Petersburg is not a real Russia is a European city we can say the same but um, uh, it was, let's, let's say, some of the, the best brain of uh, different countries that brought here say, their ideas and adapted to the local uh, uh, culture. So here you can s s say a fusion of Europe in, uh, into a Slavic territory and um, probably this is the most European city of uh, Black Sea and of Ukraine. Awesome, That's, uh, I definitely concur with that. It has this very European melting pot feel to it. Uh, what kind of expat do you think would enjoy living in Ukraine and in Odessa in particular? Uh, this uh, sense of uh, easy life, the possibility to find uh, very easily friends because uh, as I said, people are very open and uh, look uh, this is a, a former Soviet country so uh, the clock of history is uh, late for 10-20 uh, years there are many uh, professions many uh, style of working that here they didn't come yet so a person with a good experience uh, at international level here can create something that so far uh, the local, still a little Soviet culture, doesn't think to do. And this is my example. That's why I decided to remain here after my project with the Italians went over and created my own business. Exactly, and that's maybe a nice segue into what is the Odessa Journal, uh, since that's uh, obviously something you founded here. So it's an English uh, language online publication dealing with business and culture uh, for the city. Uh, Did that come about? Yes, this is, why, this is my answer to a lack of communication by the city. Try to imagine a city with the one million of uh, inhabitants, uh, with a very colorful history and uh, uh, culture that has no, uh, let's say, um, any sort of information abroad. Everything is uh, written still in Russian. Uh, the few um, news that are translated usually are negative ones, so that's why the international image of a criminal city. Odessa Mama. Odessa Mama, a criminal city, Ukra mafia. Ukrainian mafia, and political violence. Uh, it happens something like that, but this uh, city is uh, safer than many European countries, I must say. And uh, the beautiful side of the city is not shown on the web. That's why we created uh, um, a journal in, completely in English 
and it's exciting to work on that because every day we publish about uh, the history of the city, the culture, but this is very important also about business because this is city is a target of uh, international investments. There are many uh, international managers. There's the possibility to create projects. So also business life is covered by Diodesa Journal. Yes, it's an excellent publication. I love reading the article, especially for me about the culture and I learned a lot about the, the history of the city. Um, today, what influence do you think? Because a lot of people have left Odessa. We talked about Odessa Mama that comes from kind of reputation um, of mafiosos when they left either yeah. from Moscow or New York. Uh, they, they still had this uh, um, longing for Odessa Mama, the homeland. Uh, what influence do you think the Odessa diaspora has on the city today and on its cultural life and maybe its business life? Uh, or are they interested at all? No, no, look, uh, it's a very interesting question because I must say that uh, among my readers, which are mostly outside Ukraine, because uh, uh, writing in English you have this advantage that you, are, you have an international audience. And most of my, my readers are in, uh, among the uh, Ukrainian diaspora. For the moment, you can, and diaspora doesn't, I don't feel any influence uh, except for a few communities. They are very, uh, uh, they have close ties with the city. But Ukrainian diaspora is, is, is not a big influence in the city. I would like that uh, this influence, these ties could be stronger. Because actually, Odessa is a nice image in the world. In the United States, there are 13. Uh, places with this name. There are girls named Odessa and so far I never heard about uh, boys named Lviv or Kiev. So it's uh, the word itself, or the, the name itself of the city is an international brand. Yes, for sure. There's Odessa, Texas. I've never been there. Apparently some of the uh, immigrants who went to work... Odessa, New York. It's of a course. district. Yes, yes. Near to Brighton Beach, I think, right? So I actually haven't been to those things. Next time I'm over in the States, I'm going to have to go. The Odessa Journal, I'm going to link it below, so if you're planning to come to Odessa, you want to know a little bit about what's going on here, the history and the business uh, environment, then definitely go and check it out. Um, also information about social life, because uh, of course uh, an expat needs uh, to know, uh, or a for foreign visitor for a short while, needs to know where to drink, where to eat, uh, where there is nice music, so we cover also all this uh, issue about social events uh, and meeting with foreigners and nice places to be visited. Beleza, perfect. Absolutely excellent resource for you when you're coming here to Odessa. If you are planning to move to Ukraine in general, I am reopening for enrollment my high-level consultation group, Slavic, uh, Slavic Utopia Secrets. Ukraine. Uh, it's going to take, it's going to actually open up again in two weeks time and the way to get in on that is to be on my free mailing list. It's only open to my most loyal fans and if you're not on that already there's a link below and you get the czars, hotspots to cities like Odessa um, to supplement what Ugo has on the Odessa Journal, uh, Kiev and actually Minsk in Belarus. So that's just free. You go down below there's a link there. You type in your email address, you confirm that and then you're on the mailing list and you get that free gift which will help out anyway so that's a no-brainer um, super well that's it from Odessa Mama Disvedanya Dopobacina Ciao Ciao Sar Experience